everybody, welcome to the Cube after dark. Actually, it's not that dark. You can see the sun is still shining here. San Francisco here at RSAC 2024. Come on inside the Cube. We're here with Josh Hargis, who's the AI security chief at Cranium AI, security company, solving some really interesting problems. We're going to get into it, Josh. Welcome. Good Thank to see you. you. Talk Appreciate about you your roles, me. AI security chief. I do a lot of interviews. I've, I've not heard that title before. Yeah, I, I think it may be a new title. Um, so, so my background is uh, back at MITRE. I ran uh, AI security research. I ran, uh, I ran some uh, AI red teaming exercises, mostly with you know Department of Defense kind of folks. Uh, but really, Cranium saw an opportunity uh, to kind of bring you know this this new title, you know, AI security chief. We we think this is really something that's going to be you know part of the future of uh, of organizations. What's different about security and securing AI? No, it's a great question. So it really comes down to that new attack surface uh, that's introduced by AI uh, that is pretty unique. You know, it's very different from cloud applications. It's very different from some of the uh, traditional things that you encounter in internet, you know, cybersecurity. Um, you know, things like prompt injections, uh, where you, you almost do, you know, social engineering uh, to get around some of the systems that, that exist right now, um, all the way to things like data poisoning uh, that may actually allow you to get back doors into an AI system. You've been deep into this world for a while. When did the light bulb go off <laughs> for Dr. Josh in terms of this is going to become a serious problem. Yeah. We got to start working on it. Yeah. You know, don't tell anybody until RSA 2024 <laughs> when we have a product to launch. When did the light bulb go off for you? That, that's an excellent question. So, probably around 2016, 2017, we started to see some academic papers uh, come out um, that really started to exploit these AI systems in ways that were reproducible. Um, so you know there were a lot of a lot of ideas about you know do some perturbations to some imagery and you get uh, you know an incorrect response from an uh, image recognition system. Uh, but really around 2016, 17, we started to see real world applications of this. Uh, there were a couple of uh, papers where you know somebody would print you know a funny looking pattern on a T-shirt, for example, and they could evade uh, person detection. So they, they could go through a security system and not be detected. Um, so it was it was really those kinds of moments where you know it, it went from research paper to reality. So that was the sort of transformer, you have first like papers. Okay, but you said, all right, this is going to be a, a, a problem, and we're going to solve it. That's right. You couldn't have had any idea that the AI heard around the world in, in November 2022 was going to create this tailwind for you. Correct. I mean, that's just a, an amazing combination. Of, of skill and talent and luck all coming together at the same time. I mean, first of all, wow. <laughs> Second of all, congratulations. Thirdly, where do you go from here? No, that's a great question. So, agreed. I, I think the timing is really interesting. You know, when I came to Creedium back in October, um, I, you know, I think a lot of the systems were very much focused on, you know, computer vision, focused on a little bit more traditional machine learning. Transformers and Gen AI were really, you know, sort of, uh, the up and coming pieces, uh, and they have really come to the forefront. So things like prompt injection, where you're working with large language models, uh, and you can fool those into giving you know personal identified information. You know that that's a whole new realm. Um, so yeah, I mean that 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 timing piece was crucial. Uh, you know I, some of our time at Miter, I brought a couple of folks from Miter over to to Cranium with me as well. Um, we really tried to define the process of what does AI security look like from a holistic kind of system view, um, something that would transcend, you know, uh, individual sort of sort of red teaming or individual AI security efforts uh, to a broader sort of systematic approach, um, and that's what we've really tried to do at Cranium. So you know how everybody sort of talks about, well, we're in the early days. Um, this is like dial-up, in you know the internet era. Yeah, and so. I, I think about that and I say, okay, when I think of things like prompt engineering yep. or RAG, yep. I say, is that the equivalent of like having a website in <laughs> 1996? Because yeah. I think it's, it's yeah. actually, you know, not that hard. It's actually easy yeah. to do a RAG. Prompt engineering, sometimes I think, you know, eh, it's not that exciting. It, it was exciting a couple of years ago. Yep. But now I think, okay, we're in the early days. What do you think about that, and where do you think that will evolve? Yeah, that's a great question. We've already seen it evolve. 
Um, so, you know, folks that are familiar with, you know, large language models and trying to use those internally for their own, you know, operations, um, they've started to put architectures around those that include Bragg, you know, retrieval augmented generation. Uh, but we even have a case study that we've submitted to MITRE uh, that is, you know, how to circumvent that Bragg architecture. Um, so it's this balance, it's this game, you know, being played between, you know, cat and mouse. You know, can, can we get ahead? Can we stay ahead of, of the kinds of attacks uh, that we know about? Um, and we really have to, you know, secure our systems based on, uh, you know, the knowledge that we currently have about the vulnerabilities that yeah, are Yeah, I can see there. RAG and things like that being very fragile, very leaky. Okay, you guys had some news today. I saw it was covered in SiliconANGLE. Yeah. Take us through what you guys announced. It's, um, let's see, we got Cranium launches exposure management solution to safeguard AI systems. Duncan Riley, who's down under, picked this up, wrote it, okay. probably wrote it, you know, just as you were hitting the wire. Yep. Tell us about this. Yeah. Um, so what we released today is really a combination of three things. So one is, uh, what is in your system? So a, a very fruit, you know, important first step to doing any sort of AI security analysis, whether it's red teaming or otherwise, is you know what is in your system. Um, you know what is the AI present? What are the models there? What what are the data sets that are being used? You know what's what is the uh, library kind of ecosystem that you're using? Uh, that's step one. So that really gives you that attack surface characterization. Step two is, what is the threat intelligence that exists out there in the world? So things like MITRE Atlas, which is modeled after you know, MITRE Attack, uh, but for AI-specific purposes. Uh, so that, that's kind of step two. What are, what are some of the uh, threat intelligence that we can kind of gather? Uh, so at Cranium, we've been building our own proprietary threat intelligence based on everything that we, we know in the space. And then you apply, you sort of marry those two together, and that gets you your vulnerability assessment. So essentially, what, what you've exposed from a attack service uh, characterization piece to what are the actual vulnerabilities that exist based on that characterization. So you're kind of curating, the second part, you're curating the threat intelligence That's right. from MITRE and other sources? That's right. Like, how do you get access to that? Are those public sources, like, I think about MITRE, I think about Unit 42, yep. Palo Alto, those are uh, a mandiant uh, yep. from Google. Sure. Are those generally, is the industry, Josh, doing a good job of collaborating, ah. making that information available so that we can actually you know, collaboratively solve that problem? Yes, so I, I believe that you know Miter Atlas, for example, my time at Miter, you know, we really really stood that up for the community purpose. You know, can we all collaborate? Can we all get together, share case studies of things that have happened, incidences? Um, so that is doing a good job. You know, obviously some people uh, are are skittish to report some of these incidents that happen in house, understandably. Uh, but can we get together as a community uh, and kind of agree upon you know a certain level of you know tactics, procedures, you know these sorts of things? OWASP is another one uh, that does a good job of this, but yeah. Well, I feel like, check me if I'm wrong, sure. you know this space better than I do, but I feel like pre-COVID, I, I definitely saw some attempts to, to kind of squirrel away some of that proprietary data and yes. monetize it. Yes. And I kind of called BS on that. <laughs> I said, no, that's the wrong approach. You know, and, and I'm glad to see the government sort of getting involved and yeah. sort of mandating some of that's finger wagging, which is not very useful, but sure. but it brings awareness, and I and I, it, I I feel like the community is at least more sensitized to that. The cloud providers, they're making plenty of money doing their thing, you know. I mean, Microsoft makes a lot of money in security, but yeah. you know, AWS for instance doesn't try to monetize it; it's kind of built in. You know, they monetize it other ways. Google as well. Right. So I feel like they're willing to share that threat intelligence. That's right. So that's a good thing for all of us. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And actually how that consortium came about was really a partnership between MITRE, Microsoft, you know, Cranium, other startups. You know, how do we share that information more freely? Because we're all better off. You know, and if we and how about Iran and China and, and Russia? How are they doing in terms of sharing that information? <laughs> uh, we got to work on I that. Think we, right? I think we know the answer to that. Yeah, one. Right. Josh, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. <laughs> appreciate Great it. to have you. Congratulations yeah, on everything. All right. Thank you. Okay, keep it right there. We'll be back. More action from theCUBE after dark. The sun is actually starting to come down. This is Dave Vellante. You're watching theCUBE.